Okay, today I got something on the bench I think you've seen before. The Jaguar Dana 44 rear end. This is a power lock differential. And what I'm going to address in this video is how to rebuild the power lock section. So if you watch my first video, I go through showing you how to pull it apart, change the bearings and put it back together, shim it and all of that stuff. This one, I'm gonna just focus on the power lock section and showing you how I take them apart and put the clutches in it. Some little tricks that I do. Thanks for watching. So when I rebuild these power lock differentials, I like to take the ring gear off, mainly to get some weight off of the assembly. You don't have to, you can leave it on. But before I take the ring gear off, I do like to mark where it was. So I put a little bit of a mark over here to show where the ring gear was in relationship to the, the diff. And once this comes apart, I'm gonna mark both halves. I'm gonna take note where these yellow markings of the paint are. There's sometimes there's some other marking here, like I think a blue paint here. Gonna make sure that everything stays exactly the same when it comes apart. So let's get to taking this ringer off. I already loosened up some of the bolts with some of the French locks. And we're gonna take these off. Just get them out of the way. One more here. Get them all out of the way. Take that ring gear off, put it aside. Now it's a little bit lighter to work with, okay? But what we're gonna do first is mark the halves. Notice you have blue paint here marking this blue pinion, and you have yellow paint here marking this one. So you kind of know how these are gonna go together, all right? And what I'll do is I'll put some punch marks there and we'll do uh, an X. So put X marks the spot. That looks good. There. So these power locks, they have kind of like a bevel washer for the clutch plate. So it's really important that you take note of how the whole thing comes together and comes apart. So this is what I want you to notice. This is your bevel clutch plate. You got a bevel plate this looks like this had water in it at one time. Clutch. Plate. This is stuck together. Sometimes it really works well. You could take a little WD-40 and shoot it in there and loosen it up, break the film. It's gunked up. See, so we have another clutch, another plate. You call it your cone, whatever you want to call it, okay? Notice how this thing works. How this gear goes right in here like this, all right? So I'm gonna leave this all together. Put it back this way. Go 
this like that. Now, I'm going to just leave this one together like this. This one's going to go on the bottom. That's the other gear. Put that there. Here's the other cup. Put there. And notice again, this is your bevel. Notice it's got a slight bevel to it, all right? That's what actually gives the pressure on the clutches. So basically, when you, your limited slip action, even though this is called a power lock, what happens is, is that this is what gives you your clutch pressure, are these little bevels. And if they get heated up and they get flat, they'll flatten out and you won't get your good limited slip action anymore. So this is a little bit burned up. It's not too bad, but... Maybe it had some water in it. This is from an old Jaguar. It's been sitting for a bit. It's got some wear to it. So a new clutch pack will really help go a long way. So what I'm going to do is clean this all up and we'll put it back together. So a few things. On the side gear, this is the cup that it fits into. I like to scuff this up and break the glaze with 240 grit paper. Just want to just, you can go with a cross hatch pad and then grow across. You can see how this is kind of glazed from the clutch. So I like to kind of just clean up this glaze with some 240 paper. And that's what I do is I'll just put it down like this. And I'll just take some paper and break the glaze. Put like a little bit of a cross hatch pattern on it. Just to break the glaze and give the clutch a little bit something to bite into, all right? I'm going to be replacing this clutch pack with a smooth pack. There's two different versions of these clutch packs. There's a smooth pack and then there's an aggressive pack. So the smooth packs simply have a little bit thinner plate on it. I guess to relieve a little bit of the tension so it's not as aggressive and they tend not to chatter. This is going into an XKE Jaguar. I doubt the guy is going to be doing drag racing and road racing. So a lot of times if you use the aggressive clutch packs, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of chatter. And in order for you to really break in the rear, you kind of have to do figure eights with the car to get the rear to stop shattering. So I find that the aggressive packs that normally came with these, if you try to replace them, you tend to get a lot of chattering again before it clears up. Also, the, the nice thing about having the ring gear off of this, it makes it nice and easy and light to work with. And you can kind of polish the area where the bearings are going to go back on the carrier bearings. Make it nice and smooth. Check off for of burrs. But it, it does make a big difference by not having the ring gear on here. Makes it a lot easier to work with. I put some gear lube in here. I'm using just a, a Joe Gibbs fluid, all right? So... Now, what you could do is you could actually soak these, which is something that I would recommend doing, is just kind of soak these in oil before you put them together. But this car is going to be sitting with fluid in it for quite a while anyway before it actually fires up. So I'm not too concerned about how this thing is going to work, okay? 
So I'm using the ground end. This is the finished ground end. That's going on last. I'm putting the cup in. And then I'm going to just kind of line up these good clutches and drop this gear in. May have to shimmy it down. That's there. Now, we have blue paint here, we have blue paint here. Now, the one with the blue paint, if you notice, went on the top. It had this blue here. Notice it has this notch on it, this angle piece, if you want to call it. It's notched, the shaft. So, the yellow one has to go in first before this goes in. Because this was on the top. Remember, I had marked it as being on the top. So we have to find out where the yellow one goes, and we just take the matching part of the case half, spin it around to where the yellow is. It's gonna go there. So the yellow has to go here. And what I do is I have this facing up, in other words, these angled notches in the cross shaft are facing up. See that? And I just lay it in like that. And then what I'm going to do is lay this one in and match it up with the blue over here, just like this. Put that aside. Do the same thing with the other one. Fluid there. The bevel, by the way, is facing towards the outside of the case so that were just like this. There are some rears that have them facing towards the other direction, but on the smooth clutch pack, it faces this way. Feels really good. Nice. So you can see the arrangement. You can see how the lower one fits into the ring gear case side, and the upper one I have the angle part of the pinion shaft cross shaft facing up so it engages the case. And this is the port case that I marked. I put an X here so you could see visually where it is. Now the hardest thing is, is kind of, you kind of have your finger in here. I'm kind of holding the, the pieces up so they don't drop down. And I'm going to just hold this and bring this in like this. And then with my hammer, just a little hammer, just kind of start tapping it down so it seats a little bit. And usually, when you have this lined up correctly, pretty much it's going to self-center because of the cross shafts and how they fit. I'm just using some HVL assembly lube on the bolts so they don't gall because everything's cleaned.
I'm just running them down with the gun a little bit. Side to side. Now, what you can also do, just to double check, you can look right over here, right in this spot over here, and you can see that it's butted up against one another again, that it's, it's seated properly, you see? So you want to do that sometimes. You want to make sure that everything is seated correctly, that you didn't catch any clutches, just to be sure, but it looks really good, okay? Some power locks, if you got Model 60s and Model 80s, the bolt torques on these may be a lot larger, but these are 60 foot-pounds for this one. These eight bolts, again, will torque down to 60 foot-pounds rather than bore you with showing you how to torque bolts. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. Now, I'm lining up that little mark I made here for the ring gear, and I'm going to put the ring gear down in the same position as the mark I made as it was before. That looks good. I'm doing is I'm pushing the ring gear against the carrier, making sure it's not co cocked at all. This I just want to make sure. I like doing it by hand. I feel like I got a better feel sometimes doing that. So specs for ring gear bolts on Dana 44s range anywhere from 45 to 60 foot pounds. I torque these down to 50 foot pounds. And what I'll do is I'll run across, I'll go from this bolt to this bolt, and then just kind of gradually go all the way around like this, okay? That's how I do it. So again, I'll start here and just keep on working 180 degrees apart and go all the way around like this until they're all torqued. Then I'll do a whole just pass over everything, make sure everything is seated and it's done, and then bend back these lock tabs. And when it comes to the lock tabs, the factory always just bends one tang over, and I like doing both of them because a lot of times they don't sit completely flat, and especially when you take the bolts off and put them back on again. So I'll bend another one up and over as well, and I do them double. I use a punch and I get it flat against the, the bolt, and so that's how I do the tabs. But I might as well, the way I look at it, you might as well do two. This way it little gets extra protection that the bolt isn't gonna get loose. So that's how I do it. So I'm always doing two tabs instead of one, all right? Now we're going to put this back in the unit and it's all done. So it's pretty straightforward. It's not too hard to work on these power lock differentials. Important thing is to remember that when you take it apart, put it back together the same way, mark the case halves, and just make sure that everything you do is put together exactly the same way you took it apart. All right. That being said, one of the important things to realize is that all these Dana 44s and all these power lock systems have different arrangements for the clutches. So Sometimes you might see more clutches, sometimes less clutches, sometimes clutches with bevels, sometimes without bevels. Sometimes they face towards the carrier walls, sometimes they don't face towards the carrier walls. It's very important. I replaced this clutch system with a what they call a smooth clutch pack. It's less aggressive than the aggressive clutch pack. Approximately 
The difference in the stack height, so the clutches is about 50 thousandths per side. So it's going to get, make it give a little bit more and slip a little bit more. This is a cruise of this car. This isn't road racing or anything like that. So they don't need a heavy, aggressive clutch and have to deal with chattering issues or braking issues like that. So this should work out really fine for this application. The power lock differentials for the Dana 44, the Dana 60, and the Dana 80 are all a little bit different. They have different torque specs, different clutch pack arrangements. So it's important, again, that when you're taking your unit apart, make a note of how it went apart and put it together the same way and you'll have no problem. Thanks for watching. Hope this video was a little bit helpful for you. At least you got to see what's inside one of these power locks. Pretty straightforward, no big deal, right? Again, hit that subscribe button. Please share my videos, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.